great to have you stopping by. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, March 20th. Which means tomorrow being Thursday, I've got that live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we're there for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and we're taking requests from investors about stocks they want us to look at. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring me a ticker. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. But to be completely fair with you, I need to let you know that if you want your ticker looked at, you got to get it in the queue before the show starts. I put up a placeholder for this video so people know what's going to happen around lunchtime, and you can drop your ticker in the comment box then. Well, I go by first come, first served. So if you get your tickers in early, I'm going to look at them. Well, by the time four o'clock rolls around, that's it. I've got all the tickers I can fit into an hour, hour and a half. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. That's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is just share a hot penny stock with you that I found through the day as I was trading. I am a day trader and I primarily trade penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm constantly keeping my eye open for stocks that have potential. And I got one for you today. This is Blade Air Mobility, ticker BLDE. Now her chart is radical. It is all over the place. About a week ago, they came out with financials that were brilliant, that were really, really good. And the stock fell. It fell hard between 40 and 50%, and then it fell some more. Well, today some news came out that they have started a share buyback program, and that has got the stock rising in recovery, and I think there's going to be some big push. Because as I was doing more due diligence to see what was going on with this company, I uncovered a lot about her financials, and they are excellent. This company is really looking good for the next two years. So Blade Air Mobility, she finished today at $2.85, and she was up almost 16.5% today. Now, this is a penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits compared to the OTC. First off, there's no transaction trading major exchange stocks. Plus, you get to trade at pre-market, after-market. You never get to do that with OTC. And you have a lot more money and volume up on the major exchanges, not to mention oversight. And folks, that's what you really need. We put up with a lot of BS down there in the OTC because it is decentralized. We don't have one organization overlooking the entire OTC. There are lots and lots and lots of different brokers. So personally, I like trading these penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is Blade Air Mobility all about? Well, jumping on over here to the most recent news press, we get the most recent description. Blade Air Mobility provides air transportation and logistics for hospitals across the United States, where it is one of the largest transporters of human organs for transplant, and for passengers with helicopter and fixed-wing services primarily in the Northeast United States, Southern Europe, and Western Canada. Now, they don't make a whole big deal about it here, but that and for passengers is a whole nother division. They are working in the medical division, and they've been doing that since September of 2021, when they made an acquisition of Trinity Air Medical. This was an entire company. They had a fleet of SUV vehicles for ground coverage. They had jets. Maybe they had helicopters. I don't know. But this company got all of it for $23 million. And since then, that's where they've been putting a lot of their energy is into the medical aspect. And they're making good money doing it. But they still have their charter services. They are working in different areas of the world with short charter services up to like 250 miles. And they do this with helicopters, small jets, amphibious planes that land in water, and, as I'm going to tell you right here, electric planes. The company is based in New York City, and with Blade's asset light model, that is to say they don't own most of what they use, <laughs> coupled with its exclusive passenger terminal infrastructure and proprietary technologies, they are designed to facilitate a seamless transition from helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft to electric vertical aircraft, the E-plane, enabling lower cost air mobility that is both quiet and emission free. Okay, let's start right there. 
I was very interested in their e-planes. How many electric planes do you have? Because really that's where the whole world is going, whether on the ground or in the air. Well, I couldn't find that number anywhere. But what I did find was an old, old article that has information that is current today. I found this news press from April 2021. Blade recently reached an agreement with Beta Technologies to buy 20 of their planes. These are the vertical takeoff and landing planes. This is for their passenger transportation network, but they're also going to be using it with the medical, as I've discovered. Now, this is where it becomes current. With deliveries due to start in 2024, followed by operations in 2025. Now, in my readings, I did read somewhere that they said there was a possibility they could get some of these e-planes certified by 2023. Well, from what I've been seeing around here, it looks like they have some of those e-planes already. Another part of this deal with Beta Technologies, wherever the company is going to be using these e-planes, Beta Technologies is going to build their charging units for them. That's a great deal. Now, as they were saying, they are in three places, the USA, Europe, and Canada. And they are doing all sorts of flights. They are going from one airport to another airport. They are going to islands. They're doing a lot of small things as well as groundwork. I mean, it's like a taxi or Uber. If you need a vehicle to go somewhere, they've got that as well. And as I said, they are in multiple areas of the world. They're in Europe. I see we're in France, Switzerland, Italy. Uh, I see the city of Monaco and Nice. They're working with the airports over there as well. And then we've got stuff over here for Canada. So they've got their charter business, which is constantly going. They have their medical business, which is growing. That, that one is getting bigger and bigger right now. So now that you've got an idea of what roughly the company is about, what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh yeah, look at that. About two and a half times their normal volume, right? 250% up, going from under a million, 927,000 shares a day for the last 30 days as an average, to almost 2.5 million today. People like share buyback programs. Share structure for the company. All they tell us here is an outstanding share count. It's about 75, 76 million. We don't know what the float is, but we know it won't be higher than the outstanding share count. That's impossible. So that's the most it could be, but it could be all the way down to a million. Anywhere in between there can be our float. Market cap for the company, we are about 185 million. Now let's take a look at those financials because this is where all the good stuff comes from. And we're gonna get a little bit here and a little bit from the news. So we're looking at the last four years. And as you can see, their revenues have been increasing nicely over the last four years. Starting off at $50 million. We've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. Jumping to $67 million, more than doubling to $146 million. And then at the end of 2023, we were at $225 million. And they had $42 million of that as profit. Looking at our quarterly reports. Uh, they're up and down. Our lowest is at 38 million. That was over a year ago. And uh, two quarters ago, we were at 71 million, which was our highest. Our last quarter for 2023 was at 47 million. And we got to bring home about 9 million in profit. Now let's take a look at that balance sheet before we look at the most current report. I do have that for us. Cash, cash in the bank as of December, 2023. We had about 29 million in the bank. Total assets for the company, 294 million. Liabilities, way down there, 60 million, which means we've got positive stockholder equity in this company of 234 million. Now, we do have more information because they just came out with their financials. And as I said, they were good. Revenue was up quarter over quarter by 25%. Revenues were up year over year by 50%. Their net losses dropped about 40% from 34 million down to 18 million. 
Then they give us projections for what they say is going to happen for the next two years. Most companies only give us one. They tell us that they introduced guidance for the adjusted EBITDA profitability in full year 2024. EBITDA, that is kind of like your gross earnings. That is earnings before interest, tax, deductions, and amortization. They say they're in profitability now for 2024. And the adjusted EBITDA is in the double digit millions for 2025. They are telling us right up front, their financials are strong and growing over the next two years. And then just on top of that, they tell us they announced a pending acquisition of eight jet aircraft to support continued growth in the medical area. So they've got a lot of good news and still, you see what day this came out on, March 12th. You're going to see on the chart, it fell without hesitation. It fell all day and the next day it fell some more. Why? I have not seen anything bad in this information here. Let's take a look at those disclosures for the company now. Oh, we've got a couple of new Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways, but we're interested when they buy them or sell them. So when you jump in here, you jump down into this area right here and you look for a P or, excuse me, you look for a P for purchase or an S for sale. If it's any other letter, it's something else. What this one happens to be is options. That M is associated with options and we're not really interested in that. And that's what the other one is too. But these Form 4s are sales. However, don't take concern with that. These were obligated sales that the insiders had to do for tax obligations. They had received restricted unit awards sometime last year and they had to pay tax on it and it's done through stock. So all the sale, about 60, 70,000 shares were sold. I mean, each person had to sell about 60 to 70,000 shares to pay their taxes off. But each person has got million shares of the company. So the insiders are loaded up with shares of the company. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. So we've got two pieces of news here we need to consider. We've already looked at this one, Blade Air Mobility reports financial results. However, there was more information in this I wanted to share with you. Down here they tell us the acquisition of the eight jets for our Oregon transportation business will further improve our competitive positioning. Now this is very interesting. The vast majority of our medical flights and nearly 100% of our passenger flights will continue to be serviced by third-party owned operated aircraft. What? So they don't own the planes, they don't own the helicopters, but they are being paid for services rendered. That's why they're asset light. They don't have a lot of expense holding all these planes. They don't have all the maintenance of keeping them up, all the insurance, all the licenses. They tell us that their medical business has more than tripled since their acquisition of Trinity in 2021. Now here's their projections. I'm going to touch on to these again because I want you to keep these in mind. First off, they ended the year 2023 with $166 million in cash. They are holding that in cash. We have positive stockholder equity of a couple hundred million. 2024, they expect to be doing between 240 and $250 million worth of business. 2025, they expect double digit year over year revenue growth. Well, the lowest double digit is 10. So if they're doing 240 to 250 million in 2024 and they expect a minimum of a 10% increase, we're looking at another 25 million. But that's the basement. We don't know what it could be. It could be 20, 30, 50%. We have no idea. But the bottom line is, is that the company is growing, growing in business, growing in profit, growing in revenues. They are financially strong. And we get more information about that in this last piece of news here. Now they tell us about a $20 million share repurchase program, but they tell us why they're doing it. And in that, we get some more information about their financials. 
Today, the company announced its board of directors has authorized the repurchase of up to $20 million of outstanding Class A common stock, our stock. The reason? The company's expectation of profitability on the adjusted gross income for the full year 2024, coupled with its debt-free balance sheet. Debt-free, there's another juicy point, and significant cash balance of $166 million. That's why they're doing a share repurchase program. They can afford to do it. However, they're not going to be foolish with the money. They tell us right here that they are going to take opportunity to buy the stock when it's at stupid prices. When the stock is having a bad day and falls for some reason, the company's going to come in there and buy shares up. But it really doesn't matter what price they pay for the stock. They're eliminating the stock. And what did we have? About 75 million outstanding. And the way I figure it, 20 million at roughly $3 a share, you're looking at 6 million shares. So we're going to drop that from 75 million down to about 69 million. Not a big change, but every little bit helps when you're looking at shareholder equity. So the company to me looks really good. Business is steady. Business is growing so much so that they feel confident they can put out $20 million just to buy shares back. We have positive stockholder equity. We are debt free. What else could you ask for? How about a rising chart? <laughs> Let's go see what that's doing. Oh, I am so ready to do some charting. It's my favorite part of due diligence. So we are over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim, and we're going to take a look at Blade Air Mobility, ticker BLDE. Got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high bubble about six months ago in July of last year of $4.54. Then she went into a tailspin for three months, falling more than 50%, down to a low in November of $2.05. Off of that low bubble, she had a rip going up over 100%, and I have no clue why. She came back down to the 200 and landed right on the 200, bounced off of it, climbed back up to that exact same spot, and then fell again. This time, she could not hang on to the 200, had to battle with the 200, Finally got on top of it, started the climb looking really good, and then our most excellent financials came out on the 12th, and the stock plummeted. Look at that drop. Even days after that, she continued to fall, and then thank God for the news today, she has turned around and she is in recovery mode now. Now let's put a little bit of perspective on this chart. I've got my regression channel here. I'm going to poke this high bubble and pull it to current times, and it automatically lays the channel out for me, so I don't have to do any work here. Well, as you can see, we've been in a downtrend over the last six months. Over the last few months, we've been at the top half of this downtrending channel, trying to break out of it without any success. Here, it looked like we were going to be successful until those beautiful financials came out and that dragged us right back down to the very bottom of this channel, which is where she's bouncing away from right now. She's bounced off of a low here of $2.43, pushing to 302, 303, falling back to our nine day SMA, which has crossed our 20. So this is looking firm and strong. What looks weak are these other SMAs. That's a 50 and a 200 haul. 200 hall is just as strong as the 200-day SMA, and these are coming down on her head. So there could be a battle here. However, I'm thinking bouncing off of this floor, closing in on the center of this channel, which is where she really starts to get her strength, I think we could see a nice climb come out of this. Looking at our oscillators, they say we are in the midst of a recovery right now. Our PPO was falling hard. It leveled out and it's now starting to climb with an imminent crossover. Same thing going on with our MACD, lots of green bars accumulating, and our RSI has come off the floor of 30 up to 52, which is pretty decent. Now, I prefer 55 or greater, but 52 is better than 30. And I notice our volume has been stronger since the financials came out. Hopefully, that will keep up. Let's take a look now at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, outside of that drastic fall there, she was doing really nice. She was respecting that 200 fully. Wasn't even dipping underneath it. 
slowly got on top of the channel and then started to run, started to get away from it, and then came out our most excellent financials and she fell all the way down here to $2.58. She came up a little bit, snuggled up against that nine day SMA, but didn't dare cross it. And she hit this low of 245 and thank God for that news. She is now on a recovery. She jumped quick from 240 up to three bucks falling back to the nine day SMA and she's been staying above that nine day SMA all this time, even after market hours showing us she still wants to climb. Our 20 and our 50 are pushing up, our 200 is still down, but it looks like it's just about ready to curve around. Our oscillators are showing some nice strength. We just had a crossover on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. That is just like your MACD, except the MACD uses the whole price, the percentage price oscillator, right, uses a percentage of the price. MACD has just had her crossover as well, and our RSI is now up to 61. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, she's been in a downtrend this entire week until today. And God, look at that 200 day SMA. She was coming down fast and furious, took a bend here, still falling, and now we are actually climbing after today. She bounced off of this low bubble going sideways. Looks like she was gonna continue her downtrend had not that news come out today. She busted through the 200, took that jump, came down to the 20 day SMA, climbed some more, got real close to the top of that channel and then jumped away from it, coming underneath the 50. And now it looks like she's wrestling with the 50 and it looks like she could actually be on top of it. Now our 200 is way down here. She's underneath this 200. It looks a little precarious. So what I like to do is see if she's actually sitting on an SMA somewhere else. There you go. I'm on our 15 minute chart. This is 15 minute five day. You can see after her climb, she came down to the nine day. When she did fall, she hit her 20 day SMA on our 15 minute chart. She's fully respecting that. No doubt there. She pulled away, got a little high from it, came back, fell, and got a little low from it, and then has come back, even Steven, and she is sitting right there on her nine day and 20 day SMA, looking like she's ready to run. We just had a crossover on our 50 and our 200 haul over the 200 day SMA. To me, this looks good, folks. I'm liking Blake. There is a lot of potential here for a run right now and a lot of growth over the next two years. Everything in her financials is good. Everything. Revenues are growing steadily, fast, and strong. Profit, doing the same thing. Positive stockholder equity for us. They have the share buyback program, which is going to give us more share equity. The outstanding share count isn't that bad at all. I am liking this company. They're looking good. And now that they've got this new medical aspect, which is actually making them twice as much money as the chartering, I think there's a good chance this company is going to be making a lot more money than they tell us. Time will tell. But of course, I did not cover everything, so do your own due do, do diligence. Do, do, do diligence. I'll get it out. Give me time. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.